My team's been complete. I have all the players I want. Got some extra coins to spend as well. But a lot of people are asking me, how did I get to this point? How did I do it? Step one would be completing the fantasy challenges. So in this video, I'm gonna try to make it simple. Let's do three steps. The first step is to do the fantasy challenges like I said. You're playing against computers. It's very long sometimes, <laughs> not gonna lie, it could get long. But the grind is worth it, you get a lot of rewards, a lot of coins. If you've checked my channel out, you'd see a lot of streams completing these challenges. It could get boring, but all you gotta do is grind it out. What I'd like to do is stream it, uh, play some music, because obviously it's gonna be repetitive, so you're gonna get bored fast, but you just gotta find a way to grind it out and then build your team from there. It's a lot of time, but it's worth it, which will bring me to step number two. As you complete these challenges, you're gonna be earning rewards and coins. And the very first 90 that I've ever gotten was from a booster pack, which is Vince Carter. And what's funny is that I've always wanted this card, and I eventually got him in a pack, <laughs> which is crazy. So as soon as you start collecting rewards and coins, you could use these to help you in your challenges. Because I'm not gonna lie, in the beginning, completing these challenges can be hard because your team is not as good. But as you get boosters packs along the ways, well, along the ways, <laughs> I messed that up anyways. As you get packs along the way and you get more players, challenges are going to be easier to complete. So the beginning is going to be a struggle. You're going to lose a lot of games because I did. So I had to repeat a lot of these challenges because sometimes you're down 15 with a few minutes in the fourth quarter and you just don't have the firepower to complete the challenges. But you just got to keep trying. And this is another pack I've gotten from a challenge. I got a program pack. And to be honest, my, my luck in packs are not that good, but sometimes I do get lucky. And if you've watched my streams, you'll see some of the cards I've pulled. I got 95 Westbrook, I got 89 Dwayne Wade, I got like other cards in the stream. But for the most part, a lot of these cards have been mediocre or less, especially for the time that I put in. As you can see, I got 84 Bellinelli here. I didn't record all the openings because there's just way too many. But if you watch my stream, you'd see a lot of packs I've opened. And these are some that I've recorded. And as you can see, I'm just collecting rewards. And you might seem, you might think that these are nothing. But in the beginning, when you're starting out your team, all these cards, they do add up. As soon as you start selling them, let's say for a thousand coins, two thousand, they eventually add up because you're going to get a lot of packs along the way. And they're going to add up small, little by little. And eventually you'll get 10,000 coins, 15,000 coins, 20,000 coins, and then, you know, you can start building your team up little by little. It's more of a marathon. It's not like... Don't expect to complete your team really fast. It's more of a marathon, more of a grind. And step number three is to sell your rewards. As you can see, I sold some of them. And also buying and reselling from the marketplace. And the card that I bought and resold the most is probably Glenn Rice. Early on, Glenn Rice was worth so much so i explained that you need patience and luck because obviously you got to be lucky to find someone that sells it for super cheap and by patience it takes a lot of time so you got to keep searching and searching what i used to do is between games after every challenge i would check the market right away so that would be like every five minutes because if you don't check every five minutes someone else could snipe the card so if you're there early it really matters so you got, just got to keep checking and checking that's what i did early on because if if you don't check someone else is going to have the opportunity to steal the card another tactic i decided to use is patience and taking a risk for example this andre iguodala the clock is winding down for thirty thousand. i took a risk thinking that nobody's going to buy it so i waited for the clock to go down because i knew he would put it back up on the block for a cheaper price and you guys saw I ended up buying him for 20,000 instead of 30 and back in the day saving 10,000 coins was a lot so I took a risk there I took a lot of risks actually in buying and reselling it's what you got to do as well along with patience and luck so all this 
combines into you know what you're able to get in your team in terms of buying and selling it's all about common sense as well uh if the if a player is popular let's say steph curry or lebron those are cards you always want to try and buy and resell but if it's a card like uh i can't find an example right now but some players that people don't really want um, I wouldn't try taking a risk on buying and reselling those just try to find popular players and I'm showing you guys some of the players that I have bought and resold and eventually as soon as you start stacking up coins and doing these steps it's a rinse and repeat and eventually you could get the players you want for example I wanted Yao Ming earlier and Steve Nash also early on is the second 90 I got along with Vince Carter so Vince Carter was my first 90 Steve Nash was my second 90 and I think this was a worthy purchase because back in the day, if you compare to all the other 90 point guards, they were all going for 100,000 and above. Derrick Rose, 300. Wall for 124. Curry for 300. Irving for nearly 250. So Steve Nash for 88,000 back in the day, for me, it looked like a steal. So I didn't know prices back then, but just with your logic, you're able to deduct if it's worth it or not. Um, so this was just, you know, it took me a while to make this video, find all these clips for you guys. So if you guys found it helpful, please leave a like or comment. I'm just trying to help out uh, the new live users. This is something you can do every year on this game uh, to build your team because a lot of people don't have a strategy. So this is the strategy I used. So if you found it helpful, drop a like and drop a comment and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to get flashed, please be sure to share and like this video. To stay updated, click subscribe and also follow GFlash on Twitter.